Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm Luscious Female Fan. Steve-alicious here, back with the Razer Phone 2. But before all of that, thank you so much to all the new subscribers. Well up over 6,500, now well on our way to 6,600 as of the taping of this video. If you've been loving the tech, both new and old now, go ahead and give that subscribe button a tussle. It certainly means a lot to me. Okay, so the Razer Phone 2 in 2022. When you're talking about the Razer Phone 2, there's something you just got to get out of your get out of the way, get through your mind, get through your head. Razer hates you. Hates us. They great coming up with the products. They're really cool products. They got the RGB, they got the gamer DNA, they got all the rest of it, but when it comes to quality control and when it comes to support, after your money's handed over, nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. And nowhere is that more evident in the Razer Phone 2 if you have one. Quality control. A lot of people have had issues. A lot of people had the speakers popping off, the speaker grill problems, all the rest of it. USB-C not allowing charging anymore. The USB-C port just not working. A lot of people's cameras gave out. A lot of different problems with the device itself. And on the support side, the fact that a Snapdragon 845, 8 gigs of RAM, all the nice specs that this thing had, the nice build quality, the fact that it's stuck on Android 9 and the excuses that they gave for it to be stuck on Android 9 come up more than just a little short. So Razer certainly hates us. However, if you have one or if you can pick one up cheap, I do believe they're still worth owning. I was one of the lucky ones. My charging port works, my wireless charging works, my camera works. Nothing's falling apart. The screen's still in great shape. Fingerprint sensor works, no problem whatsoever. 120 hertz display. Screen looks great. Great hardware. So I'm perfectly happy with mine. And if you're one of the lucky ones like me, I'm going to go over some of the new games. I'm going to go over gaming performance in 2022, but also why you might want to even pick one up if the price is right. And I'm talking sub 150 bucks here. A lot of them, it, for some reason online, when you look up Razer 2 phones, you have extremes. You have people selling them for $600, and you got people selling them for next to nothing. And as long as you can verify that it's in decent shape, or you have some sort of buyer protection, then picking one of these up under $150, I believe, is a good idea in 2022 for at least one major reason, I think. So let's go ahead. I'm going to cut now. We're going to look at some games. We're going to look at three or four games. We're going to look at Xbox Game Pass. And then we're going to look at games running on the device itself. And we're back. Starting with Forza Horizon 4. This is through Xbox Game Pass. I have my Xbox Series X controller plugged straight into the USB-C port. Now, you have to understand one thing. This is kind of an aside. doesn't have to do with the Razer Phone 2 specifically. But when you plug in a Series X controller using Game Pass, there are some mapping issues. Some people have them when it's plugged directly in. Some people have them when the Bluetooth configuration. Bluetooth worked perfectly for me, but I did have to do some remapping. But you can see here, responsiveness is good. The screen looks phenomenal, super smooth. You'd expect that from the 120 hertz refresh rate, even if it isn't running at 120 hertz. It's a nice smooth display. LCD still has always had great contrast to it. So it's fantastic for games. But it does great with the controller pickup, not having any input lag, which would annoy me. That would be a way, especially with a driving game, something fast-paced like this, that I would just give up. If I weren't able to steer properly, I would have no chance, but it works fantastic here on the Razer Phone 2. And then we hop right into Sea of Thieves, which is another game you'd think kind of intensive, a lot of display stuff, a lot of colors, all the rest of it displays really nicely. It's tough to pick up on camera but you'll see as we head out on the open seas here as i figure out which sail i'm putting down that it works actually really well looks phenomenal the screen still holds up even though it's only an lcd it's not oled the screen panel still holds up and makes the experience the one you'd want to have on xbox game pass so you could still use it for that and that leads me to why you'd still hold on to your razor phone too or why if you have the opportunity to pick up a clean one in decent repair why you'd want to do that because because if you're able to still use it let's say you have a device that isn't exactly a battery beast let's say you picked up that z flip 3 last year and you're getting three and a half four hours of screen on time you don't necessarily want to gum that up 
with a bunch of gaming, but you'd still like to be able to pull out a phone and do some gaming throughout the day. Well, this might be an option for you. You carry a second device around that's for gaming. So you have something like this that's built specifically for gaming. So for relatively cheap, you're getting modern options. You're getting the 120 hertz refresh rate, which is nice for gaming. You're getting a Snapdragon 845, which is still plenty competent for gaming, which you're going to see here. I'm going to let this one run, the Call of Duty mobile clip, run for a bit because this is one where it's very intensive. Not only are you having to calculate the graphics on screen and it's doing all the work for that, it's also communicating with the network. It's also having to register all the other players and all the server and keep track of the server and all the rest of it. So this is where you usually start to see a little bog down on some devices when they're trying, and this is the, the nice graphic setting. You can see it here, no issues whatsoever. Super smooth, I'm actually playing on controller, which isn't terrible, it's not the, the best experience in the world. It's mostly meant for you to be touching the buttons on the screen, but still works great. So if you're somebody who just loves to get the gaming in, even if it's, it's simpler games, we're gonna split, play some Pokemon Unite here in a moment, love to get the gaming in, but you're just tired of destroying your battery, you're out, you don't necessarily wanna to have to top it off or charge it up, or if you're not running one of those, those phones that has seven, eight hours of screen on time, even with gaming, but you want to run a couple of intense games for at least a couple hours, two, three hours during the day and not have it destroy your main device, this is definitely worth it. Not not the most up-to-date thing in the world, not security updates and all the rest. I haven't gotten a security update in a year, but if you're just gaming, you have to figure maybe that's not, you know, you're not doing banking out here. You're not doing your, your stock trading, your, your crypto, all right? Your, your Coinbase account isn't going to be on this device. So if you're thinking you're doing stuff like that, it might be worth it to have around. And if you if you have one and you feel like, geez, yeah, maybe I have to get rid of it, maybe because of all the rest of it, you can still use this device. As disappointing as it is that we don't have the support, especially with the lame... When they basically had two people working in the engineering department at the end on the phone division, and when they had that thing on Reddit where someone asked about Android 10, it was like, well, well we have to check with the engineering department. We have to check with the two people there whether it's capable or not. But it is. You can see this Pokemon Unite came out in 2021. Not the most intensive game in the universe, but still super smooth. Runs. It's a great experience. You're not going to notice any slowdown from any modern device. So I think people overestimate how much you actually need with all these like Red Magics and Black Shark gaming phones and Arag phones and all the rest of it. Overestimate exactly what you need for a great gaming experience. I don't think you need to necessarily, if you're okay running it as a secondary device, or maybe you don't need a lot of screen on time. Maybe all you do is game and you're okay with three and a half, four hours if it's just dedicated to gaming. You don't need a heck of a lot. You don't need to spend that six, seven, eight hundred dollars And the ROG phone, the special edition one was crazy. $1,500, some insane price. You don't need that to get great gaming performance on the go. If you could pick yourself up a Razer Phone 2 in good working order, in decent condition, with the speakers working, with the camera working, with the USB charging port working. Those are the main failure points, it seems. So if you're buying one online and you don't, you're not really sure what kind of buyer protections you have, reach out to the seller. Say, hey, listen, does it charge? Can I use the, use the camera? And how are those speakers doing? And then kind of go from there. And I think you could pick yourself up a really decent, nice little gaming machine for around 100, 150 bucks. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.